Welcome back. In this video, we'll look at using lamps and molecular dynamics to solve a real materials engineering problem. Specifically, we're going to solve the speed of a dislocation under an applied shear stress. Now this could be used in, for example, a dislocation dynamics code where we want to know how fast a dislocation moves when a stress is applied. So for this, we're going to go back to the ICME website and find an input deck. So on the ICME website, icme.hpc.msstate.edu, go over to the nanoscale page. Once you're here, scroll down under tutorials and lamps and click on lamps tutorials. Here, we'll scroll to the bottom to calculating dislocation mobility in lamps, because that's what we want to do. Here, it'll have a, a brief walkthrough of basically the same thing as I'm going to go through in this video. So first, we need our lamps input file, and that's right here, dislocation velocity. So it'll bring you to this text page, and you just need to copy all of that. And I'm going to paste it here. And so this is our whole, uh, our whole input deck, and I'm going to save that in this file as, I'm going to make sure to save it as all types, and I'm going to save it as dislocation velocity.in. Uh, but I want to save it, not there, under here. I'm going to save it there. I already have one, but I'm going to save it over top of that. Okay, now there are a few things, there's a couple things we need to edit, and then a few things I'd like to point out, because there's something that we haven't seen uh, in our previous input decks. So first, let's change our material here to copper. So we're going to change that to copper, and because copper is an FCC material, we're going to change that to FCC. Okay, so there are a few new things here. First of all, we're going to read the data into, into this file. So instead of creating the, the atom positions through lamps, we're going to read in atom positions that have already been created. And after we go through this input file, we'll talk about how we're going to create that, uh, that data file. But essentially, it's the same format as a lamps dump file. So it has the system cell and all the atom positions, but it's just going to read it in and use those as the initial positions for the atoms. So that makes it a lot easier for us, and it allows us to create more complex, uh, complex geometries uh, in whatever code or whatever we want. The other thing that I'd like to point out is we're going to define a couple regions here um, that are the upper and lower faces of our simulation cell. So these INFs or infinities essentially just mean the farthest extent of our simulation cell. So you can see that we're going to use some top half of the cell or top piece of the cell in the y direction and a bottom piece of the cell in the y direction for these upper and lower blocks uh, respectively. And then we're going to create groups um, with those regions. So these regions are just geometric regions. But once we make a group, now we can see the atoms that are within that region. And why we want to do that is because we're going to set the force on those upper and lower groups to be zero in the x and y directions. And that's what these fixes here do. It's basically saying I'm going to use a fix on the lower, uh, on the lower group and we're going to set the force to zero in the x, zero in the y, and null in the z essentially means that we're not going to constrain it. So we're letting it have a force in the z direction, but not in the x and y directions. So with this, we actually have fixed those positions in the x and y directions. We've fixed the atom positions in the x and y directions. Now there's one more thing I want to point out in this, uh, in this file. And that is this right here, this minimize command. It's, it does exactly what it sounds like. Instead of running a dynamics calculation where uh, atoms are accelerating, this essentially is just going to be moving the positions until they reach a uh, minimum energy. 
or at least the minimum energy it can find within the tolerances that we give it. And that's what these, these are. These are uh, the tolerances for force and energy and the, um, the number of iterations that we're allowing it to, to go. And so this will actually create the dislocation in that our initial geometry doesn't really have a dislocation. It has an extra plane of atoms, but it's not a realistic dislocation for this material. So by minimizing it, we're letting the atoms assume a more realistic uh, state. And that's good because when we start the dynamics, we don't want to be at some high energy uh, because all the atoms will rush into their lower energy state and you can get some weird vibration things because of that. So we want to create a, a stable geometry at the beginning. Okay, so the rest of the rest of the commands in this input file are very similar to what we've done before. Um, if there's anything you don't recognize, uh, you can look it up in the documentation. It should have a very good explanation of it, but for the most part, it should be fairly straightforward. So we're going to move on to actually creating our atom positions now. So as I mentioned, we're going to create those outside of LAMPS and import them into LAMPS. And we're going to use this script here, uh, this atomistic dislocation generation script, in order to do that. So this is a Fortran code that was created by Dr. Sebastian Grow, and we're just going to use it to create this dislocation in this atomistic structure. So you can find the source code right here, and again, just copy everything, and you can put it into a new text file. And I'm going to save mine as this dislocation F90. But we're going to need to compile this. So you can use whatever uh, whatever Fortran compiler uh, you want. I'm going to be using msys in uh, mingw, so I'm going to save this in my msys home directory just to make it easy for myself. So that's in here, and I'm just going to save it right there. Um, and you can follow these same directions if these same uh, directions if you don't know uh, what what I'm doing here. But essentially, you just need to um, just need to compile it. And so I'm just going to use something called mg uh, mingw, and you can Google that and install it pretty easily. So I'm going to start uh, start my msys, and you can see it looks like this. Um, and then compiling it, I'm going to compile it just like it shows here, actually. And I'm going to use gfortran to compile that. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. And this should compile pretty simply. Um, and there you go, done. So the only other thing I need to do is to um, copy over the executable back to my uh, to my my simulation directory. So I'm just going to go back in here and copy that. And bring it in here. And you see I've already done that uh, once at least. OK, so now I have it there. And so now I need to open up a command line. Uh, and navigate into that simulation directory that I'm going to use. And you can see here that I have that atom dislocation executable that I just created. And so I'm going to run that. And I'm just going to run it. No arguments, just run it. And so as we run it, it's going to ask us, prompt us for different quantities. And these quantities will help it determine what structure to make. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. So we're using copper, so it's going to be an FCC structure. So we put one. And luckily for us, copper is a built-in material, but you can also uh, just just prompt a value. You can ask it to prompt you for a value for the lattice parameter. But we're going to use copper. And then this is going to be how many reference cells in each direction it's going it, your cell is going to extend. So you'll want to mess with this number. I'm going to use a pretty small number for this simulation, or for this one, just so that the simulation runs quickly. Um, but you'll need to make sure that your answer is independent of the system size. So I'm going to do 20, 10, and 2. 
And so that'll be 20 times this in one direction, in the x direction, 10 times this in the y direction, and 2 times this in the z direction. And I do want to create an edge dislocation and a pad structure. Um, and the, the reason I know that is back in our, uh, in our input deck, you can see if just based on the, um, the input file that we're going to be using, which is this atom file, we're going to be using FCC because of copper, and then we're going to use an edge dislocation with this pad structure. And that's what this input deck is uh, expecting. So we need to make sure that we give it a structure that it can use. Now you can see it exited with this deallocation error. However, if we look, we do have uh, this file that was just created, and so it created it fine. It's just a deallocation error that happens at the end, um, and may not always happen at the end, but it still created our, our position file just fine. Okay, so now we've created our atom files. We have our input files. Uh, the last thing that you'll need to make sure you have is your um, is your potential files. So depending on what potential you're using, uh, it depends on where you know it'll depend on where you're going to get these. But if you've just been if you've made your own potential file and you're using the MPC tool from some of our earlier videos, then uh, you'll have an option there to output your to write out your potential files, and so when you do that, it'll create a file, a folder for your material, and you'll get these two two files. And so that's the ones that I'm going to use. If that is not what you're using, then make sure you name your files in this way because that's what the input script is expecting. So just make sure that you have your material symbol dot library dot mean and your material symbol dot parameter dot mean. And those will be the two files that the input script uses uh, to define the potential. And just make sure you have those in your, uh, in your same directory. Okay, so now we've, we've got everything ready. We have our input deck, we have our position files, and we have our potential files. So we're ready to run. So I'm just going to uh, call lamps and give it the input file dislocation velocity dot in now depending on how many atoms you have this might take a while um, you can see up here that we only have 2,000 atoms so this shouldn't take very long um, but again it, it'll totally depend on your potential and how many atoms you've created so I'm going to wrap it up there for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at the output that was created from this simulation, and we'll look at how we actually want to post-process that to get our uh, dislocation velocity. See you then.